Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. In order to have a healthy relationship or relationships around you, you have to have a healthy relationship with yourself. Yes. It's a cliche. You hear it all the time. You hear this thing. You need to love yourself before you can really truly love others. It's true, <laughs> but you don't know it until you know it. And once you discover it, it's like, oh, that's what was missing. We're going to talk about that and how to have that relationship with yourself, how to navigate other relationships. And it all comes down to doing what they call the work on yourself. A lot of that comes from energy work. A lot of that comes from other modalities, including hypnotherapy. And that's that's all in her wheelhouse, and she helps people with this all the time. She's very holistic, and that's part of why I love talking with her. Rima Wardini is back with us. How are you doing today? I'm doing good. Thank you, Steve. How are you? Very well. Very well. Um, let's recap some of the things we've talked about before, if we could. Like, for example, energy work. We hear that term a lot. How would you define it? Energy work is technically... Uh reconnecting with a, the person's own energy. So basically reconnecting with your true self, because I truly, we're all energy and that's that's what we are. And uh, it's just reconnecting to your true self. And when we talk about energy work, we're talking about aligning your flow of energy within yourself, all your chakras, all your energy fields, your aura. So once you get to that sense of alignment, that's when you feel, because often enough we don't know what alignment means, but it means it's when you feel that you are just connected with everything. It's that moment where you feel that bliss within yourself, that complete love, that um, you're just so grateful for everything that you're, you have around you. And that's a great way for, to know when you are in, in alignment and when you are energetically uh, flowing within your within your energy field. Hmm. So it's kind of like the chicken or the egg here, and I'll explain what I'm thinking. Do you need to be in touch with yourself, grounded, things like that, to effectively do the energy work or have the energy work done on you? Oh, often enough, what happens is that people come to 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 professionals like like ah uh, like me because they have lost. They feel that they have lost that, and they don't know where to go anymore. Uh, what we try to do is to tell them that we are we are here. You don't have to get to the point where you're completely lost in order for you to reconnect with yourself. I think we are never completely lost because our true essence is still within us. And all we do as practitioners in, in the holistic world and healing is to remind you, remind ourselves of who mm. we truly are. And just to, to remember how to touch, to, to go back and touch that part of you. Remember that part of you. Once you remember mm. it, it's, it's always like you can't unknow what you know. You can try, but you can't unknow when you, what you know. Would you say when you're in that, in the zone, if you will, where you're, you know, your true self, you're maybe you've done some energy work, had it done. I, I say, do, do the work, but people are really doing it for you. <laughs> so I'm trying to <laughs> properly describe that. Oh, it, yeah. Well, it, is it like this? You have a home base you have a foundation it's like let's say you're swimming in the waters of life and whoa, oh boy look uh, something just happened oh yeah i just went under for a second let me come back up again all right i'm good i'm good and i'm floating along and then a lot of us that's how we do life we're just floating along but when you've nailed it in terms of figuring you out and getting that that grounded feeling is it, it is it like having an island to go to? Oof. Yeah. All right. I'm gonna yeah. swim to the island. It it often feels home. And and often enough when we go into the uh Reiki part or the hypnotherapy part, or we always bring you to a space to a place where you feel safe, 
to a place where you feel like you're home. Because that's the only way we can we can have you trust the process and we could have your heart more open. It's when you reconnect, often enough I bring people to reconnect to a memory or to something that they are so attached to or they completely feel safe in. And it could be in your grandmother's arms. It could be mm. on, like you said, an island or a memory of a vacation that you had that just felt like a bliss for you. As soon as we get to that space, that's when the heart, I feel, opens more and you're kind of like relaxing into that that moment. Mm. But often enough, what happens also, Steve, is that a lot of people cannot visualize things. So we have to choose different paths. We have to choose um, the feeling of it or go back into the breathing, the breath, or something like that. Or well, how did you feel when you were in that space? If you cannot imagine it, just how did you feel? Because these memories don't, don't go because it's a cellular memory as well. As much as we have the traumatic cellular memory, we also have good cellular memories. And that's where we try to bring that person back. Hmm. Would you say once you've, you've gotten to that spot where you're in a, we'll call it a good place, that when something presents itself in your life, that you can call it come back to center, swim back to the island faster, where previously you'd be in freak mode, like oh, I can't believe, you know, back to the water analogy. You're in tur turbulent waters. It's it's crazy here, mm -hmm. but you're you can faster come back uh, and to that. It's practice, right? It takes and, practice, and also faith. I believe mm -hmm. you know once you, you you overcame this, you overcame that, you overcame that, you can get back to that that spot much faster and be like, I'm okay. I'm all right. That was horrible, but I'm good. We're going to move forward on that now. But most yeah. of us aren't there. And then we go into that, that crazy mode um, or we minimize things. And now we're just, it's all building up inside of us. And that's yeah. not good either. It's a downward spiral, right? Yeah, yeah. You don't want to get to that bottom of the downward spiral. And we tend to kind of go in it a bit more, but there's a lot going on in the world, Steve, and a lot of things are moving very fast. And we could see that there's chaotic things happening. And the more that we are caught up in the social media and caught up in all of these yeah. things around us and what we are listening to, it is our duty to go back. When you say do the work, it is our duty to go back to that center and to to be in the love vibration because there's enough energy out there to bring you back into the low vibration, into that low frequency of panic, of anxiety, of this, of that. Um, it's just practicing to go back into your heart center because it's only in the silence that you can find the answers and that you can connect with your heart. It's only mm. in the silence and we don't have much of it. So what we try to do is to bring you back to that silence, that calmness. And often enough, people cannot, don't know how to do it on their own. So we just bring you there. And as soon as you have that, it's like uh, peeking in, a, in that hole, right? Like you're kind of peeking and seeing what's out there. Once you see and you feel it, then you could connect to that feeling again. Then you could take that feeling as a reference to bring yourself back there. And it has to be a practice. It needs to be practiced. It cannot, like, it, it's not a magical pill. You have to practice to go back. Because we've been living years of functioning in a robotic way of panicking, of being controlled, of, uh, you know, I have to do this, I have to do that, I have to run, I have to answer the person within two minutes. But then... We never think of, okay, but if we don't answer the person in two minutes, mm. what will happen? Is it yeah. that big yeah. of a deal? Can I give myself a bit, a minute more in my meditation today? Can I you stay just, in that silence? We, yeah. Just going to say that what you yeah. just shared is so important and I forget it. And, you know, I'm in that journey. And it's, it's made a major impact on my life for the better. But myself, we 
forget the silence and how important it is. But I find that I get there much faster. I could be waiting in a, in a waiting room at an appointment, or whatever. And I'm just like, I don't know if I'm meditating or what, but it's like, hmm, all right, I'm going to think. Clarity. I like it here. This is a nice place to be. <laughs> yeah. Right? Yeah. And I, I, I travel a lot for my work and, and I find myself sometimes get, getting dragged into the energy of what's, you know, when you're open to the energy and we are all open to that energy, we grasp on everybody else's energy field. And the best trick for me is when I, once I get to my room at the hotel, I take a shower and I imagine that the water is cleansing all the energy that does not belong to me. Wow. And taking a tiny bit more time in that shower, because I'm grateful because I could have that shower. And you just go in that sense of cleansing. And you're going to feel a sh direct shift in your energy field. And there's mm. a lot of literal tricks that we can do to bring ourselves back. Wow. To that center. Yeah. So is it, are you really cleansing your energy with that shower or are you figuratively doing it i truly believe that because it because i used to ask myself the same question look at all this who stuff does or, it or is it or, or is it all about this you're setting an intention exactly it's okay. all about the intention that you do. if you don't set an intention most probably it will happen in a certain way but you're not going to be consciously doing it gotcha. and that consciousness that's where you're gonna reprogram your mind it's you have to reprogram your mind you have to forget everything that you know in order for you to get to the real and true knowing of who you truly are not easy and and it's not it's work and i, I talk about it as if it is and it's continuous work but it becomes easier it becomes easier when you start understanding because as soon as you start aligning yourself, you know right away when you're not aligned anymore. Yes. So you catch yeah. yourself quicker and you bring yourself back. Is it almost a feeling of when you're in that situation where you just know this doesn't align, is it almost or is it actually your intuition? Absolutely. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. It's there, There's this higher self of yours, this, your spirit speaks to you from above that's how i see it and it guides you and it's it's telling you like what you're feeling right now is not wrong just listen to it you know often enough i used to um i come from a culture where we push our children to go and say hi and to kiss people that they don't know and i never did that with my daughter because i remember when i was young and there's some people that you just I don't want to go kiss that uncle. I don't want to. Like, it just doesn't feel right. And and we kind of like get bombarded with like, you have to because these principles and pr like, no, my inner child knew that I shouldn't. There's a, an intention that is there because kids are very, very aware. Oh, yeah. Very aware. So I never push my daughter. If my daughter did not want to go and hug somebody, that's because I'm trusting her intuition saying, I'm not comfortable with this person. I don't know what it is, but there's something off. Mm. And we have to go back to that inner child of ours. That's the only way we could reconnect to who we truly are, that inner child that hasn't been heard, that has been abandoned, that uh, got all these corrupted messages that came to mind. And started believing that that is the truth. But it's not. It, mm. Your truth is your truth. And that's what you need to reconnect. I feel that my daughter has some kind of intuition. And she has said things to me before, even pointing out certain people. She's like, mm, not a good person. You know, so, might say, that person's creepy. Well, looking back, situations arose. She was right. <laughs> she was right on. Right on. Right on. My daughter's the same. She was right on. And I'm like, oh, no, don't. No, no. She was right on. Because she hasn't been, she's an old soul in that body. 
and she hasn't been uh, through the experiences that I've been. So she's more pure in regards yeah. to the amount of things she went through. So she's much more connected to her, to her, yep. to her source, to source energy. Yeah. So she doesn't know. Is, she doesn't know it though. <laughs> she doesn't know it at all. She doesn't know it, but there's definitely that sense of when we talk, you know, you started saying connecting with yourself and having better relationships. And it is true that you need to go back to your own self and have a relationship with you. But who are you having a relationship? It's that part of you that has been neglected. And that's where you need to go back. There's an exercise that um, somebody told me, gave me as an example, as like something to do, because I had a lot of trouble with that. To take a picture of yourself when you were younger and to put it in a place where you see it morning and night. And you talk to your inner, you talk to that child of yours, you, you when you were a child. And give it compliments and give it something, you know, to do for you to basically what you're nourishing that picture is you're nourishing yourself. And that's the only way that you can start nourishing others with just your presence, your love and your sense of alignment as well. Wow. Um, now I'm going to pivot over to hypnotherapy. Yes. Because that's what I did during mm -hmm. A hypnotherapy session the first one i ever did I, I really do think it was the first one and i told the practitioner take me back to my childhood not that it was horrible but there was stuff like we all have i was like take me back there and <sighs> one of the exercises was exactly what you just said where you're in a hypnotic state side note you're in full control it's not like somebody's yeah. you know like, no, I, wanna get that out. I wanna get that out of the way you know because it yeah. holds people back if I wanted to stop at any time, I'd be like, no, I'm done. I don't want to do this anymore. Snap out of it. Yeah. Snap out of it. Yeah. Yes. Just open my eyes. Yeah. We're good. <laughs> Didn't want to because it was like I was watching myself in a movie, my younger self. And the practitioner said, all right, visualize you're sitting in a chair facing your younger self. Now tell your younger self that you, I got you. I'll always have you. And that's that that was for me a game changer. And I think that's exactly what you're talking about, where if you just exactly that a picture and, and see exactly the picture that. every day. Hey, how you doing? You're awesome. You're awesome. Um, yeah. How how yeah. young, how young a picture would you say if we're gonna do that? What do you think? I think I what I did, I'm gonna tell you my example. What I Please. did is I scanned through the pictures and hmm. I saw one. I'm like, okay, this is the one. All right. Can I jump in here for a moment? Absolutely. Okay. That was the energy coming from the picture because it's often exactly. been said before, if you, you know, you're going to go to a store and, and you're going to buy crystals that you should put your hand over all of them. Absolutely. And then, oh, oh, I feel, I don't know. It seems a little warmer on this one. I'm going to pick that one. Why the heck not? If yeah. <laughs> you feel something, you felt something with that picture of you. Now yeah. I want to ask. About what age were you in the picture? I was young. I was, I think I was about a year old. Wow. And it was a picture where I was extremely happy. It was a picture where I was with my brother sitting on a desk and I was laughing, but laughing with my entire heart. You could see it on my face. I wow. was a happy baby. So I'm like, I want to go back to that, that feeling of being everything that I am. And being that happy, because I brought a smile to my brother, because my brother, my older brother was looking at me smiling because of the amount of joy I was feeling in that moment. Wow. And that's what I want to bring to the world. That's exactly what I want. I want to bring that love and joy to people and that sense of safety. And that's why I chose that picture. I would have never thought that you chose a, uh, a baby picture. Uh, yeah. I, no. <laughs> I, and, and here's why. Because our memory usually doesn't go back that far. So I'm thinking more of what you can grasp in terms of your memory. Maybe four, five, six, seven, eight, maybe 10, whatever. Never expected the baby picture. Yeah. Well, um, it could be anything. That was sure. the picture that really got me drawn well, to 
it resonated for you and there's yeah. nothing wrong with that there was a reason That's and, right. and all good and in, in when i think about it i have in, in the last year I, I went through pictures and you know i would take a uh, a picture on my phone of the picture just so i have it yes. on my phone yeah. who, has, who has time to scan <laughs> pictures nobody um i i can see in my mind me and my sister were twins when we were about two, one and a half. And it's the picture you just described. No way. It's, it's, <laughs> yeah. but I'm not, you know, I'm surprised and not surprised because, you know, there's definitely an alignment, but I think people often always go back to the pictures or the majority will go back to the picture where they're sad or they're, but just go with the picture that yeah. speaks to you and try to connect to why that message is and go always when you're doing something go with intention because I put my intention in my heart and I said okay I'm looking for that picture that will help me surpass that that will help me get to a place where I love myself where I accept myself for everything I am whether it's physical mental emotional everything that I am and that's wow. the picture that came back because that picture always made me smile wow so I, yeah. and to a point here, it's been said, and I've actually talked to therapists about this during podcasts because I mean I heard it and I want to verify it, and they backed it up, most of them, that the earliest memories you have of your childhood, the earliest ones, if you think back, is usually a bad memory because it's there to protect you. You yeah. that's why it's standing out. Yes, absolutely. It's it's normal. Your ego is kind of like taking over and that's the first hurt is the deepest, right? Isn't it that song where it's like, uh, like the first, Rod, the Rod first cut Stewart, is the deepest? Cheryl Cofro did also did it. Yeah, the first cut is the deepest. Mm. There you go. <laughs> wow. There you go. Um, yeah. Amazing talking with you and, and all of this and just backs up things I wondered and the fresh information for others. Get to know yourself. One of the best ways is to work with somebody. I did it. Um, how do we find you? How do we connect with you, Rima? You could always connect with me on my website. So it's www.holistic.com. So W-H-O-L-E-S-T-I-K.com or by Instagram r.wardini, W-A-R-D-I-N-I. And I'll be more than happy to, to talk to you, to message you, to, to get your, in, to your ideas um, and everything else. And I also can offer you my ebook where we have a lot more information. We dig in deeper into all the information we, uh, we went through in regards to the energy work. Love it. You are so easy to talk to <laughs> grounded. Oh my gosh. You are the, <laughs> you are the person for grounding. Um, and I appreciate all of these podcasts learn so much thank you. and thank, thank you. Thank you. Steve. I appreciate you. Thank you. Have a wonderful day. And thank you so much for, uh, for being with, with me on this journey. It's been my pleasure. Thanks. All right. We are coming right back. Hang on. Are you looking for even more of the podcasts and hosts that you love? The Podcast Business News Network is proud to announce that you now have even more ways to listen live. Check out the MyTuner Radio, Online Radio Box, and Simple Radio apps on iOS and Android, or find us online. Search for Business News Network on MyTuner-Radio.com, or search Podcast Business News Network on Streama.com and OnlineRadioBox.com slash US. Take your podcast on the go, and don't miss a minute of the action. Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. For nearly 2,000 severely injured veterans, everyday life has become filled with barriers. Day-to-day -day simple tasks can become pretty daunting. I have to carry my chair up two flights of steps or have somebody do it for me. What scares me the most is just the falling. When I'm struggling with my house, I think, you know, to have that one great barrier just knocked down, I mean, it's... It's crucial. Home for Our Troops is a wonderful nonprofit that builds a mortgage free, fully adaptive, handicap accessible house, and there's no catch. It'll be our very first home that we've ever owned. This is a game changer. This is where your life begins again. We need you to join us in completing this important mission. Please visit hfotusa.org and help build homes. 
and rebuild lives. Because of you, everything's going to be okay.